Hey everyone, welcome back. This little lecture series is going to focus a little bit more on heat, not only the heat within each of us when we are breaking down the different calories that we are eating, but also the heat that we see in our kitchens as we heat up um, our food products. So heat is defined as an energy transfer from one body to another caused by a temperature difference between the two bodies. Food energy is measured in terms of the capacity to produce heat, and this is known as a calorie. One calorie is the heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Now, it's important to know that we are talking in Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Celsius is the more universal uh, unit of temperature. Fahrenheit is something that not all countries use. We use it here in America, but a lot of countries utilize Celsius. Okay, So one calorie equals the uh, amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. One, one, one. Got it? Sweet. A kilocalorie is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius. And this simplifies calorie counts for us here um, for the purposes of our learning. Heat capacity is the ability of a substance to absorb different heats. Food that is high water content has a high heat capacity. So when we go eat different foods at restaurants, a lot of times there'll be a, like a nutrition guide, like over on the right-hand side, we have the cheesy gordita crunch, which comes in at about 500 calories. We have the Doritos Locos Taco, which has 170 calories. So these different foods that have a higher water content are going to have a high heat capacity, and that's going to influence our calorie counts. I have an example video here that you're more than welcome to watch on your own time on different examples of heat transfer at Taco Bell with the foods that we eat. But now we're going to talk a little bit more about heat within the kitchen. So specific heat, again, is the ability of a substance to absorb or transfer heat compared to the water's ability. The amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of substance by one degree Celsius. Knowing the specific heat of a substance of, or food helps researchers predict how the food will react during processing when we're working on it in the factory or when we are um, processing it to be distributed to different wholesalers or retailers. So for example, over on the right hand side, when we have like a pot, let's say we're making some spaghetti, okay? I like to make spaghetti myself. When we have a metal spoon sitting in our boiling pot of water, there is going to be a lot of specific heat within that metal spoon because it's going to be easier for that water to um, attract to that metal spoon or that metal ladle. It's going to be very hot when we touch it, we're probably going to burn ourselves. Wooden spoons are going to be warm, but they're not going to necessarily burn us because they, are, they conduct heat a little bit differently. Temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of a group of individual molecules. An indirect measure of molecular motion could also be defined as temperature. Um, temperature is also measured using a thermometer, obviously, and it's important to ensure food safety and product quality. So when we are um, working in the lab and we are making different meat products, it's very important that we take the temperature of those meat products to make sure that we are killing off any or um, all potentially harmful bacteria. So over on the right-hand side, we have some different um, temperatures. Remember, we have the danger zone, which is important to um, understand because we don't want to keep our food in the danger zone for too long. Otherwise, it's going to be unsafe for us to eat. So whenever you cook a food, it's best to either eat it right away or put it in the fridge uh, soon after so that those bacteria aren't having a picnic on your food. Heat flows from hot objects to cooler ones, and this is known as thermodynamics. And this is a branch of physics that studies heat flow and temperature in relation to different materials. Heat transfer methods can include conduction, convection, and radiation, which we're going to talk about next. Conduction is the transfer of heat through matter from particle to particle collisions. This occurs only in metals at the molecular level, and heated electrons skip over tens or even hundreds of atoms and speed the heat transfer even further. An example of conduction, again, would be having that metal spoon in our pot of boiling water. Convection is the transfer of heat by the motion of molecules within a liquid or gas, such as water or air. As the air temperature, or as the temperature increases, convection currents are generated um, that speed heating. It is faster than conduction, and cooking food in water is a common example. So when we are boiling our pasta noodles, that is a form of convection that 
is going internally. The, the molecules are heating up and that is causing our pasta to cook. And last, we have radiation. Radiation is the transfer of heat by electromagnetic waves. It does not need the presence of matter. Examples are broiling and rotisserie cooking. So if any of you guys go to Ernie's or John's and they have those rotisserie chickens cooking, those are an example of radiation. That is how it is cooked. It causes most of the browning of baked and roasted foods. Okay, so next we have how energy flows. Phase changes need a flow of energy, and this occurs through one of these processes, melting, freezing, evaporation, or condensation. Now, we probably heard of these in elementary school or middle school science classes, but just for review, melting happens when we have something that moves from a solid to a liquid. Freezing is when we have something moving from a liquid to a solid. Evaporation is when we have something moving from a liquid to a gas. And condensation is when we have something moving from a gas to a liquid. So this picture right here serves as another example for you to remember, radiation versus conduction versus convection. Convection, again, is happening within our pot. Conduction is the transfer of heat along the pan or the pot, and radiation is going to be um, coming up from our um, heat source. As a review, solids, liquids, and gases, we talked about this earlier this semester, but again, solids are, um, not able to be squashed along with liquids. The difference between liquids and solids though is that solids are rigid and they have a fixed shape, whereas liquids are not rigid and they do not have a fixed shape. Gases on the other hand are not rigid, they do not have a fixed shape, and they have no fixed volume. They can be squashed. So we can take a gas and compress it even further to um, increase, increase the pressure that is going on within that specific um, container or area that we are squashing that gas. We are going to stop there and talk a little bit about energy flow in our next video.